Happy Halloween, all you beautiful people in Webtown, and welcome back to Crypto Comics. We have a very special video request for you right now. If you're new, you don't know, but the Crypto Knights, over the years, the Crypto Knights who've been digging through the back issue bins here at Crypto Comics, they have requested we finish what we started two Halloweens ago when I covered Jason vs. Leatherface, issue number one, from Topps Comics. People loved it so much, they said, Crypto, you gotta finish it, baby, you gotta finish it. So guess what? Here we go, that's right. Because, because I love all you beautiful people in Webtown, you know? You ask around, you ask anyone, and they'll tell you. Who loves you, baby? Crypto. So, if you don't know what, what is going on here, you need to go into the back issue bins, check out the playlists, find Jason vs. Leatherface issue number one, and watch it, then come back to this video, okay? Otherwise, you're going to be kind of disappointed, because here we go. This is written phenomenally well by Nancy Collins. Uh, and if there's one thing I can say is, uh, when I was younger, I worked at a Blockbuster video. If you don't know, if you don't know what that is, well, let me help. You see, there's, there's only one left in the world, the last Blockbuster. It's, uh, it's in Bend, Oregon. This is a video store. We rented videos and DVDs. Basically like a, a Netflix building for you youngsters out there. Are you Zoomers? This is like a building where you go and you just get one movie. You get one Netflix. And then you take it home and you watch it in your Netflix player. And then you take it back and find another Netflix you want and you take that one home and watch it in your Netflix player. And if there's one thing I learned during my time working at Blockbuster as a young man, it was that women love horror movies more than men. So women who love horror movies are aptly suited to write not just horror movies, but horror comics like this incredible, incredible three-issue miniseries. Yeah, yeah, guys didn't come in. Girls always came in. Slumber parties with other girls, you know, doing their thing. Checking out three horror movies. Let's have fun and get scared. Good times. At least, good times for me. I love horror movies. And Nancy Collin has written a fine story here. Art by Jeff Butler. Ink by Steve Montano. And uh, let's give some credit to David Imhoff for the plot here. He helped Nancy on that. If you're wondering, this is from 1995. October, November, December of 95. The water is so much deeper and darker than he thought. From the shore, it looks so bright and sparkly and pretty. Jason doesn't really know how to swim. The camp counselors tried to teach him, along with the other kids, but he just couldn't get the hang of it. He shouldn't have gone into the water without a buddy. All the counselors said so, but no one at Camp Crystal Lake wanted to be Jason's buddy. And it was so hot, and the water looked so inviting. Where are the lifeguards? Where are the counselors? Why isn't anyone trying to save him? Mommy? Jason, wake up! Stir your stumps and take your lumps, boy. Time's a wasting. Didn't you hear me call you to breakfast, son? Oh, good morning. Bit testy today, ain't we? Get on downstairs. I got breakfast waiting on you. Smells good. What is that? It's your favorite. Scrambled brains. Well, nail my head to a coffee table. So it is. What's the matter, Jason? Ain't you hungry, boy? You didn't touch a thing on your plate last night. Take off that mask of yours and eat up. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe he's one of them thar vegetarians. There's no need to be calling company foul names. You've got better manners than that. Splat! Whoops! The president's been shot! The president's been shot! Ha ha ha! For pulling that stunt, young man, you're working garage duty today. Shit fire! That ain't fair and you know it! I love this comic book already. It's great. Don't give me none of your lip, boy. What I say goes in this house. And don't you forget it. Whack, whack, whack. Damn it, Leatherface. It's all your fault. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You stupid, scabby, butt-faced bubba. Why I ought to... Ooh, ooh. Mm. God damn lousy freak. Whack. That's right, boy. Run. Run to mama. Hey, how about you getting the cook's tour of the place? 
Think you'd be interested in seeing the rest of the old homestead? This here's the kitchen and butchering area. It ain't nothing like the slaughterhouse Grandpa used to work at back in the good old days, but it's not bad for a mom and pop business like ours. A day in the life of the Sawyer family, and there's no family I love more than the Sawyer family. Even my own, you know? This here's the freezer. We're hoping to save up someday and get one of those big walk-in deals, but them boogers are expensive. We gotta sell a hell of a lot more chili and barbecue before we can get us one of them. And this here's the smokehouse. Just between me and you, the secret of truly great barbecue is in the smoking. You know something, Jason? I like you, boy. There's something about you that's, I don't know, different somehow. I feel like I can genuinely talk to you. You're not like them damn fool peckerwoods I had to ride herd on day in, day out. I'll tell you something special if you promise not to laugh. Promise? Us slaughterers have always been demons in the kitchen. We just have a way with meat, you know. But barbecue and chili is all very fine and good. But I want to move up. Try my hand at something more refined. Maybe I could move up to Austin or Shreveport and open up one of them hot cuisine type restaurants. One with candles and cloth napkins on the table and a fancy name like Slaughter's Casa de la Maison House. Then maybe I could save up enough money, buy me a double wide and a satellite dish and spend the rest of my life not worrying about a goddamn thing except when Wheel of Fortune comes on. Damn, I gotta chop up that finger there and get it back in there. Psst, Jason, come here for a spell, why don't you? You want to see my dog, Jason? His name's Sparky, and he's a damn good dog. <laughs> Sparky's dead. But I gotta admit, he was the bravest damn dog in the world. When I held that gun to his head and told him I was gonna shoot him, he didn't run away or nothing. Hell, I still got all misty eyed just thinking about it. <laughs> Boy, stop lollygigging and get your honey down to the gas station, you hear? You ain't got all day. All right already. I'm going, I'm going. Boss me around, stupid son of a... Just, just you wait. And of course, this couple is, uh, you know, gonna break down. Oh, we're almost out of gas, honey. Oh, I got it, baby. You should have made the left. I didn't make the left. Make the left. I didn't make the freaking left. Shut up. And he's, you know, he's losing it, right? He wants to chop her up and put her in the soup, too. Hey, I hate to spoil your gloating, honey. Looks like we're safe. Howdy. What do I do you folks for? Uh, fill her up, please, and uh, would you uh, check under the hood? <laughs> Everything's okie dokie, mister. Could you tell us how to get back to the main road? Oh, yeah, you want some barbecue to take on the road? No, thanks. Thanks for the directions. Don't mention it. My pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm gonna eat them people later. Come on, Bubba. Grab your saw. We got ourselves some groceries to pick up. Hold on a minute, Leatherface. <sighs> Hitchhiker, why don't you take Jason with you this time out? That way you can show him how we do things around here. <laughs> Bubba's getting real sad. He's crying. I know you like riding in a truck, Bubba. But you can't have fun all the time now, can you? Be a big boy and let Jason ride with Hitchhiker this time. Okay? Now, what are we doing? Hey, anything the matter, folks? You ruined my car. You really deliberately tampered with it. I like and did it toad. Did we miss a page? We missed a page. I'm real sorry to hear you feel that way. Not! And he just starts bludgeoning him with the hammer. <laughs> Incoming mail! It's Texas Chainsaw Part 2. If you haven't seen that one, you're, you are way behind the times. Texas Chainsaw 2 is the best Texas Chainsaw. Hands down. Dennis Hopper is uh, amazing in that film. Bill Mosley is really, and Bill, Bill Mosley and Gunnar Hansen are really the ones that are amazing in that movie. Whereas Dennis Hopper just kind of comes off very, very odd. You gotta watch it, see it, it's amazing. Made you a little old fry house. Eek, eek, bleh. Shit, you didn't kill her already, did you? Hellfire and damnation, boy, don't you know nothing? It's more fun when you make them squawk. You don't go killing them right off the bat. Leastwise, not the women. Them's the ones that squawk the most. They fuss and cry and carry on like I don't know what. Even more so if they got a bun in the oven, if you know what I mean. Ugh. Too far, Nancy Collins. Too far. Leatherface might be dumb as a stick, but he sure knows how to make them squawk. 
He's a hell of a lot more fun on a grocery run than you, that's for damn sure. Oh, wait, we got ourselves some groceries. <laughs> what we got here, Tacker? Take a look for yourself. Darn, I was hoping we could get us some young'uns this time out. They're made so much more tender. Still, beggars can't be choosers. Come on, Leatherface, help me get these groceries in the house before they start to go bad. Now that I've done my chores for the day, can I work on my hobby? I don't see why not, Hitchhiker. Hot damn, hey, you want to see my hobby? Come on, it's really cool. This here's my workshop. Cook gives me a hard time about it. He says I'm more interested in working on my hobby than I am in doing my chores. But you see, to me, it's a lot more than some stupid hobby like collecting scalps or deformed fetuses in a jar. It's my art. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, pretty cool. Oh, you made a chair. I've okay, got a table to play some some checkers on. I don't think he's a much of a chess player. This here's our reading lamp I made. Nice. This is the one I like the most. But this here's my pride and joy. I'm still working on putting the finishing touches on it, but I reckon it'll be finished in time for Christmas. I mean, what's Christmas without a lawn Santa, right? Look, his nose even lights up. I love it. His nose does light up. He gets into the season. I like I like it when when serial killing cannibals really get into the holiday season. It's taken me over 60 hours of work so crash. And then Bubba falls and crashes into the chair. What the hell, Leatherface? You stupid clumsy some bitch! Are you ate up with the dumbass or what? Didn't I tell you to stay the hell out of my workshop? Look what you've done to Grandpa's chair. <laughs> There's no use in saying you're sorry now. Damn your eyes. <laughs> this is what you got coming. And this is what you're gonna get. Smack, smack, smack. Lousy retard. You're no son of mine, damn you. Uh. Uh. Come back here, you little monster. He's beating up the Toxic Avenger when he was... Oh, no, it's, it's Jason. I'm sorry. It's, it is, it's also the Toxic Avenger, though. Come back here and take your medicine like a man. You can't spend your life hiding behind your mother's skirts, boy. It's bad enough you're a freak. You want to be a sissy, too? Huh? Doris! Doris? Her name's Pamela. What is this? Her name is Pamela. Everyone knows her name is Pamela. This is BS. Nancy Collins. I'm looking at you. Looking at you. Shook. I like it though. No, he's not gonna let him. Jason's gonna stand up for his fellow retard. What the hell do you think you're doing, boy? Whack. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Friend. Friend. So the, the the retarded guys get together, right? Go ahead and take his side. Take up with the big cry, baby. <laughs> See if I care. It's no skin off my nose, Buster. Nothing matters to me. Not one goddamn thing. <laughs> See this? See it? Huh? Huh? And he just stabs himself in the hand to, you know, prove his manhood. And it's just... This describes exactly what happened in Comics Gate. <laughs> Comics Gate is the hitchhiker. You see that? That didn't hurt. Nothing you or anyone else can do ever hurt me. I'm invincible. And then Jason just reaches down and picks up this bone. You think you're so tough, huh? All right, come on, come on. Let's see how tough you really are. And he's just going to stab him with it. <laughs> no. But a chicken. And as for you, I don't need no big fat retard settling my thoughts for me, understand? <laughs> big sad bubba retard. I like to add some of my own effects, you know? I mean, you, you know, so it's more like a movie for you. He should have killed him. Why didn't he? Why should this time be different from any other time in his existence? Never in the decades since his resurrection 
as Jason once hesitated when it came to killing. In fact, everything about the last few days has been atypical, perhaps being separated from the familiar environs of Crystal Lake was responsible for this strange change in his behavior. Jason's mind had been flooded with memories of what it was like before, confusing him. Jason has known nothing but hate and anger for so many years. These strange new emotions frighten him. He needs time to think, which is alien to him as well. Back at Camp Crystal Lake, there had been no thought, only action. Those who dared to know love and life were to be punished and Jason punished them. Things were so much simpler then. There you are, Jason. I was wondering where you'd gotten off to. I found out about the dust up your head with Hitchhiker. I come to apologize for the boy. Lord knows you'll never hear it out of him. Ah, I see you found the family portrait. That was taken when my younger sister Velma was still alive. It's on account of Velma I've stayed put all this time. I promised her on her deathbed I would always look after her boys after she was gone, meaning Hitchhiker and Leatherface. She knew Grandma and Grandpa were too old and feeble to ride herd on them and make sure they stayed out of trouble. Hell, what else could I do? I'd sworn an oath. After all, I was her brother, and Leatherface and Hitchhiker were her brothers too. Kinda, but that's a different story. Here, help me get Grandpa and Granny downstairs. It's almost time for supper. To be... Continued. And then keep telling yourself it's only a movie by Rick Meyer. And they have uh, these really great write-ups in the back. There's, there's Rick Meyer now. Uh, about movies. Horror movies. Check it out. And it will be continued right here in Jason versus Leatherface, issue three. And this is, you know, when, it, when it's time to get down to business, right? Beautiful cover art, as always, by Simon Bisley. If you don't know who that is, uh, I feel bad for you. And you need to... Check that out on uh, Wikipedia, I guess. So they, you know, they taken Grandma and Grandpa downstairs. Leatherface, you've been reading my funny books again, haven't you? Don't tell me you didn't do it. Them's your fingerprints all over the cover of this great issue of Iron Man from Marvel Comics. <laughs> it is Iron Man from Marvel Comics. What I tell you about reading my funny books, huh? Huh? You stupid or something, boy? Whap. There's only one way you're ever going to learn to stay away from what's mine. I'm going to take out my Swiss Army knife and cut you. And that's if I make sure you don't forget your lessons. What? <laughs> when I get through with you, you're going to need a leather bodysuit to go with that damn mask of yours. Hey, now, what, what do you think you're doing? Crash. Mister, you just opened yourself one damn big can of whoop-ass. Hitch. Not at the dinner table. Yeah! Shroom. How you like that, hockey head? Pulls it right out and drops it. Oh, shit! Bubba, quick, go get your saw. This would have to happen just before we sit down to eat. Cook, Leatherface, help! Get this crazy Yankee off of me! Call him a Yankee. I feel it. Jason is a Yankee. Leave my brother alone, you. He just gets him with it. Way to go, cook. You showed him how the cow ate the cabbage, all right. And he pulls it out and throws it at him. Chunk. Whoa! You would have to go start something. And big chase happens. That should hold the some bitch. Bam! Yeah! Jason, this is all just a big misunderstanding. I didn't mean nothing about it, big feller. Honest, I didn't. Look, can, can we talk? Mm. I guess that means no, huh? That's, that's my impression of Bubba. Get him, Leatherface! Get that son, bitch! Dog will hunt! He had a big face off, right? For the first time in his existence, Jason has gone against his nature. Instead of destroying, he chose to defend another. And this is how he was repaid. Jason thought he had finally found someone who understood what it was like to be different, to be apart from the others, someone like him. But as he might be, Leatherface had one thing in common with all the others. He was alive and, living, 
new love, even if it was the love of a stunted, twisted family. And all that loves must die. Bum, 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 bum. And we got a big major fight. Battle of the retards, battle of the retards. <laughs> No offense to anybody out there who might be retarded. They are, they're mentally, these two gentlemen are developmentally delayed and I love them for it. And so they fight and they're gonna fight, you know, and they're gonna fight incoming mail. And he just smashed his brains completely out. You reckon he's dead? He's got brains leaking out his ears. How the hell could someone be alive and have that happen? No harm in making sure though. You wasn't no easy kill, that's for damn sure. What do we do with him now? I, I don't know. Eat him, I guess. Of course. <laughs> Logical. No, that just doesn't seem right. Jason was a good old boy. Maybe he didn't have more sense than to get himself wrapped up in family matters he didn't have no business in. But he was more than just meat. It wouldn't be proper to dress him out and cook him like the rest. Besides, something tells me he's tougher than a cheap steak. No, nope, we'll give him a proper send-off. Just like the one we gave Cousin Emery after you lost your temper when he beat you at checkers and you stove in his head with that two-by-four. He shouldn't have laughed at me. Hitch, you and Leatherface get him ready to go. I'll go see if I can find something to weigh him down. And, and no lollygagging. Now I can get to see what that sucker was hiding behind that damn mask of his. <coughs> Are you telling me no, boy? <coughs> Well, hmm, I guess you got a point there, Bubba. Man's got a right to privacy. Besides, it looks like that mask's growing to his face anyway. Later that evening, damn, this sucker's heavy. If you ask me, this is just a waste of perfectly good meat. We could always make jerky out of him. No one's asking you, Hitch. I just couldn't bring myself to serve poor Jason here up in the stew. That's your problem, Hitch. You never think about other people's feelings. But Bubba does. He gives him the machete back because he loves him. I guess that's about it. Does anyone have any last words they'd like to say over the body? Yeah, right in hell, dickweed. Splash. You are so uncouth. Bubba drops a rose. I love it. Water. It always begins with water. It always ends with water. In a way, Jason finds the predictability of his situation comforting. It reminds him of the fairy tales his mother used to read to him. They always began the same, always ended the same, just like his life. He has spent the vast majority of the last 20 years seeing the world through a scrim of murky water. The sight of the moon, warped by the ever-shifting skin on the pond, reminds Jason of home. Home. He has been away from Crystal Lake far too long. This strange alien place has been filling his head with equally alien thoughts and feelings, things such as compassion, friendship. These things are unnatural. Jason could return to the cannibal's house and kill them all, one by one, without any trouble. Then again, he could have slaughtered them at any given time, but he didn't. Jason begins to wonder why, but loses interest halfway through the thought. He has had enough of strange people and different places, it's time to go home. And he has a long, long way to go before he gets there. When vacationing in Vermont, visit Camp Crystal Lake. It sucks. The end. And this has been the very enjoyable and bloody conclusion of Jason versus Leatherface right here on Crypto Comics. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you for watching Crypto Comics, and I hope each and every one of you beautiful people in Webtown and all you Crypto Knights have a very happy Halloween.